I think this celebrity chef culture is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think this is from shaitan. Uh, and it has every hallmark of shaitan on it. Uh, number one is no one has a criteria on who is a sheikh. Uh, for them, a sheikh is anyone who has a YouTube following, who has a lot of videos, who seems to talk uh, in a nice way, funny guy, really cool chap. Uh, he'll throw in a few puns here and there. He'll be really use some of the street talk. And that is who a sheikh is today. Has anyone ever asked who your teachers are? Whatever happened to the Isnad? Aren't we a religion of Isnad? Sammu lana rijalakum. As they used to say, tell us who your, your men are. Who are your teachers that you learn from? Can anybody here tell me right now from your top number one celebrity sheikh that you follow or that you have right now, if you showed me a YouTube links and the number of sheikhs videos that you have, do you know who his teacher was? You have absolutely no idea. I will guarantee that. And that itself is a proof that you are upon a following that is not from Allah. I have no doubt about it. If you cannot tell me who your teacher's teacher is, then you are already a jahil and you are already following a blind man and you are already on a path to Jahannam. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, he said, the road to Jahannam is paved with good intentions. The road to Jahannam is paved with good intentions. All people having good intentions. You, you are listening to that video because you have a good intention. You want to increase in Iman. You want to come closer to Allah. You have a good intention, of course, but it, it's leading you to Jahannam. The reason why is because you did not do what other scholars did, which is, who are your isnad? What is your isnad? Who are your teachers? That's number one. So when you don't do that, then you start following somebody just because he's cool or he speaks my language or he speaks my lingo, then already you know that you are misguided. That's number one. Number two, and I ask this from the girls and sisters, Wallahi, do you listen to these sheikhs because you are, you are attracted to them? And I can tell you, the other day I, I saw these girls preparing to go to Mufti Meng's lecture in Malaysia. And they had such makeup. They don't even put that much makeup for their husbands when their husbands come home to please them. They had a level of makeup that was shocking. And I'm like, are you going there for Allah? Are you going there for shaitan? Are you going there to be his second or third wife? He already has that, by the way. So is it because of that? Because you want to be his fourth wife? Is that what you want to be? Is that why you're doing it? Or are you doing it for some other reason? So actually, some of our sisters actually unfortunately lead them on. And this is misguidance, wallahi. I don't think there's at all Islam in this last one. Yep. And this is very critical. And this is very critical. You know, you, you know when we, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doctor in, uh, in the emergency department. You don't ask the intern about taking off the, uh, the life support from your baby if your baby's dying. You don't ask the intern. You ask the head of the emergency department and if required, two consultants. If not, you also ask the ICU consultant and the PEDS consultant. Then and only then, after then, MRI has checked by the radiology consultant. Then you say, okay, switch off the machine. What do we do today? Today we ask a Tom, Dick and Harry chap who's not even studied Islam, studied Arabic somewhere, doing tafsir of the Quran or some other, you know, high things. Tafsir of the Quran? Are you for real? We used to be afraid. For seven years we studied tafsir of the Quran in Medina. And we still never made tafsir of the Quran. We studied it every single day. Every day. And we still never made tafsir of the Quran. And you are now making tafsir of the Quran. Listen to people who make tafsir of the Quran and then you think you are actually guided? Are you for real guys? Come on man. And when we talk about this you think, okay, you know what, you are jealous. Jealous of what? Of what? With all due respect, what? Of mad crazed fans? Guys, come on. This celebrity culture needs to change. The reason why I'm saying that is because it's led someone that we all know into a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it's going wild right now. Is that correct? And so at this point in time, I'm so sorry, but it's not just one person's fault. I actually put up my hand. I think there are three people that are guilty here. Number one is the celebrity sheikh himself. He should have stopped himself before he becomes a celebrity. And we know of the ulama who would stop themselves. If they did not have enough ikhlas, they would stop themselves. That's number one. Second are the fans. 
who don't behave like students of knowledge, they behave like fans. There's nothing called fans in Islam. It's only students of knowledge. So behave like students of knowledge. Yeah, make dua for your sheikh. Guide the sheikh. Don't act like, you know, secret lovers of the sheikh. Act like sincere students. And number three, the other mashayikh are also guilty. I'm also very, very guilty. You know why I'm guilty? I'm guilty because I only commanded the good and I did not forbid the evil. And thank you for this question because it gives me a chance to forbid the evil too. We cannot simply command the good. We must forbid the evil. And it is for this reason I will finish off by reminding you of a verse in the Quran. Uh, those people who disbelieved from the people of the book were cursed upon the tongue of Dawood and Isa, Jesus Christ. That is because they never used to stop themselves from doing wrong. They never used to forbid the evil. And so Allah says, What an evil thing they used to do. What was the evil? The evil was that they never used to forbid from evil itself. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I was just having a chat actually with some of the other mashayikh about similar incidents about what's going on right now. And actually, one of the important points that was brought up, which is very critical, is that we seem to have more ghira. Listen to me very carefully, everybody. And this is very critical. We seem to have more ghira about a person's private matters, or what he does with his wife or other women, then we seem to have for Allah and his deen. Because we seem to have blown this issue to a level of proportion because of one person's issue with uh, you know, other human beings, rather than his issues with Allah or his book or with his deen. And where should our focus be? Our focus yeah. needs to be on the Islamic credentials of a person yeah. and on those topics rather than on personal matters. So we know the Prophet ﷺ, for example, he married a woman and he divorced her too. We also know that the Prophet ﷺ also for a period of time stayed away from all of his wives and he gave them 29 days after which he took them back. So at that, at that time, it did create a bit of a, a commotion in Medina and a stress with the Sahaba who were afraid that all of the women were, of the Prophet's wives were actually let, let go of. And what status and situation were they, were they in after that? We also know of a situation wherein the if the, or the insult upon Aisha radiallahu anha was made, wherein for many weeks the, the clarity did not come down from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was this lack of clarity of exactly what was the Prophet's situation with Aisha radiallahu anha. But the moral of the story is, that personal issues between a man and a wife are not really matters that should be making us you know, talk about each other. That's soap operas. That's for you know, nonsense TV. What we should be more focused on is if a person is identified as a sheikh, yeah. then the knowledge that we receive from that sheikh is that valuable and correct. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we know that in the books of Islam, and even in Medina, when I studied, I did not study from every single sheikh that was actually 100% true, brew, too, true blue, you know, perfect in his akhlaq and perfect in his manners. It's impossible. Yes. We know that, for example, for example, in Bukhari, about 120 narrate, 180 narrators of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, are actually Shia. Shia narrators, out of the 37,000 narrators of Bukhari, about 180 are Shia, about 90 narrators of Imam al-Bukhari, are the narrators of Hadith in his Sahih. And they're still Sahih, even though they're Shia. And about 90 of the narrators are actually Qadri, meaning that they believe in Qadr, meaning that there is no Qadr, they believe that there was no Qadr. And they're still Imam Bukhari narrated. So that means we can still take knowledge from people who have mistakes. But the point is, what type of mistakes? And how do they spread that mistake? Are they spreading that mistake? Or is this a private mistake? If it's a private mistake, leave it alone. If it's actually a mistake in the deen, then that's what we should be worried about. Allah. Uh, 